What's up, guys? Welcome back to Title Gardens. I wanted to give you guys a quick walk around update of what's going on here. There's actually a lot more stuff planned for the next, I'd say, four to six weeks. And I really wanted to hold off on doing a building update until all that really big stuff got finished. But then I thought, you know, it's actually been a little hot second since I did my last update. I'll give you a quick run around as well as kind of a, a mental preview of some of the, the new things that are going to be going on here. Without further ado, let's take a look. We have some new stands working. Originally we had the idea to do a bunch of new show tanks, maybe against the wall or something, and then plumb them all into our existing systems. But it turns out that there was like a really nice spot for a good size show tank. So I don't know if you can kind of gauge the size of this stand, but it is every bit of five feet by three feet. So if it's five feet long, three feet front to back, and we will be able to hook these guys up into our sump just fine and get it fed from the same return system that's feeding all of our show tank, our, our one show tank and all of our grow out tanks. We haven't exactly pinned down what we want to do with these two show tanks, but we're thinking with a mindset of species specific stuff. This stand company is different than the ones that designed our previous stuff. So the previous stands, these guys, are made by 8020. And the supplier of that extruded aluminum is the same as this one, but this stand is designed by a place in Cincinnati that reached out to us after they saw our stand video previously. And they said, hey, we would love to work with you guys. You know, this aquarium market is something that we're looking to, to venture out into. Maybe we can work on something. So I was like, okay, well, I've got two uh, smaller show tanks, smaller meaning about 250 gallons. Perhaps we can, we can try your product through that. They were very accommodating and one thing that I really appreciated about these guys was their, uh, they ha actually had assembly instructions with nicely labeled diagrams and parts lists that were separated per stand. So there wasn't quite a jumble of parts spread across 10 stands that we had previously where we would just have like, a bag of like 900 something or the other and we'd have to like count out, well, how many do we have to use in a stand? It, it, was, it was like kind of confusing. So these guys made that, that aspect simple. The other thing is they said um, we would love to do some sort of affiliate marketing deal. So if you talk to this company, it's called Alufab, located in Cincinnati, Ohio, uh, they will give you 10% off. Mention Title Gardens. If you're looking to do this type of stand, you can save a little bit of money. Okay guys, next up is set B that's underway. I would say that we are about one full working day of plumbing away from getting this guy all set up and running. I'm super excited about that because it's been a long time coming for this. We had a little bit of time because it took so long just to get corals out of quarantine and into set A, our first set. Set B wasn't going to be filled for quite a little while, but now that quite a little bit of while is pretty much on top of us. So it'll be really nice to, to finally get the, the finishing touches on this system. It's a, a full 2,000 gallons once it's all filled up. So each of these tanks is roughly about 300 gallons. The sump is about 500, give or take. And the show tank is five or 600, give or take. And we're gonna be getting a little bit larger once we have the additional show tank uh, arrive and that's going to be in the ballpark of another 250 gallons. But yep, interested in getting these guys up and going. Now that brings us to this show tank. We got our hand pushed a little bit when it came to setting uh, any kind of thing up in here. When we started to fill some fish into the, into the frag tanks, these tangs that we put in were super hyper violently aggressive to one another. I kind of expected it, tanks are jerks, but they're going into 300 gallon tanks, they're all getting uh, situated at the same time and whatnot, but I think that these frag tanks need a lot more rock to have something like that work. Because it's more of just a little bit of rock and some frag racks, they got more aggressive with each other more quickly, so several of them 
just took an insane beating. And this, this huge tank only has one little yellow tang in here. And we're going to be working on separating out all the other tangs from one another. But anyway, when we've, uh, so this tank has been running now for months. It's had water going through it. Uh, the lights have been off this whole time. And when we uh, finally decided to kick the lights on and put in this, this aquascape, it was covered, and I mean absolutely every square inch of this thing was covered with these pineapple sponges. We kind of dislodged all those. I'm really excited to finish our aquascape now that we've gotten the correct glue. We can make that process go a lot quicker. This was the very first aquascape that we had worked on. It fills up the space nicely, but obviously it's gonna take about four times as many of these to fill out the space. Once we're done with our initial aquascape, I'll probably do an another video just on this show tank, but yeah, that you can kind of see where it's going from here. Also, take note that this tank is lit by a dozen Radeon Pros, and that was kind of gonna be the similar idea for the other show tank that we'll talk about. We decided to go in a different direction as far as lighting for that show tank. Okay guys, so this is the other Peninsula show tank. Uh, the SPS show tank that's situated over there is a back to the wall style tank, whereas this one is the, the full Peninsula. Again, 10 and a half feet long, 48 inches wide, and 24 inches tall. I got a lot of comments about the height of both of these show tanks, that 24 inches is a little on the short side, and it looks shorter because of the length of this tank. But once you're starting to try to do work in this, 24 inches is plenty deep. Even on, when you get up on a stool, it's very difficult to reach something in the middle of the tank. Would it have been better visually to have maybe like a couple inches higher? Sure, I, I definitely agree with that, especially given the long profile of this tank. However, when it comes to doing maintenance on something like this, uh, I'm definitely not going to miss those other two inches. As I mentioned with over there, the SPS show tank, that one is being lit by a dozen Radeon Pro lights. And that's kind of what we had planned here. We even have like the, the hanging kits and everything like that ready. We have all our rails and stuff. But then I thought a little bit more about it and I wanted to try to differentiate this tank more from that tank. Already this was gonna be more of like a mixed reef but I wanted to take it in a different direction creatively. So what we've decided to do instead of hanging another dozen radions over this guy was to find some lights that we can mount directly into the pergola up top and almost have like kind of concert style spotlights that would shine down into this to give you a lot more headspace. Because right now, those lights would pretty much be 12 inches off the top of this last uh, Eurobrace. And there's effectively no airspace that that would create. And I wanted to try to do mangroves and stuff like that. So we would be able to utilize a lot of that airspace if the lights were mounted directly into that pergola. So that's kind of the idea here. We're gonna be going from uh, a dozen Radeon Pros to uh, a system by Orphic, which would kind of like be able to mount directly into there and then you can angle and, and spotlight down onto pretty much anything you liked. Those lights aren't here yet. We're looking hopefully within the next month or so that we can get this up and running. All right guys, next up, let's talk about controllers. This here is our GHL Proflux 4 with the KH director. When it comes to using a lot of automation and a lot of control systems, we are pure novices. We've used some Neptune systems in the past, Obviously, the Ecotech stuff has its own uh, brand of control. Rossmont has its own set of controls. And I would say that we've run into some learning curve issues with just about every type of control system that we've, we've ever run into. And I would say like a good 75-80% of that is probably user error. Whatever 9,000 IQ big brain stuff that you think that we do here, trust me, it is counterbalanced by a lot of really, 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 really dumb stuff that we do. And that is showcased when we're trying to set up any kind of control system. Luckily, uh, GHL, they reached out to us. Uh, and this is, by the way, this has been provided by GHL, so full disclosure there. 
And Vinny from GHL, he uh, like really helped us out tremendously, walked us through the whole process whenever we had any issues. He was very, you know, he was eager to just to get us on the phone and pretty much sort out anything that we had a problem with setting up. Now that it is set up, from what I understand, these GHL systems are extremely robust. We're kind of like fingers crossed hoping that this will work out really nicely for us because so far um, it seems like a cool system. And if this works out for us, we're going to be using it on more and more of our aquaculture setups here. The other day, Steve Shin from Aquatica came over to drop off some supplies that we had ordered. And he also brought over these VCA wave making eductors. And he just wanted us to give it a try, try it out, see how it went. And they're pretty interesting because this size fits over three quarter inch lock line. And it has no moving parts, but it makes this really randomized, almost like a pulsing flow. We've been pretty impressed with them so far. And if they work out nicely, I can see us using more of them in other tanks. And the other nice thing is, when it comes to lock line, a lot of their stuff kind of caps out at about three quarter inch in size. But the, the VCA stuff, they can pretty much make it to any size you want. So it's possible to get really, really huge ones because they're all 3D printed. I think in the future, I could definitely see places where we could go all the way up to even like an inch and a half with this stuff. So yeah, hopefully it does work out. Like right now, if they're too close to the surface, they'll, they'll suck in some air from the, from the back side of the adductor, things like that. But it's all just like kind of learning curve pains. But so yeah, so far so good. One other thing that I wanted to mention was about this cooling system that's located upstairs here. So far, it has absolutely worked. We've had some brutal 90 degree plus weeks in mid-July. And it absolutely did work to keep our tank temperatures at about 80 degrees tops. There's only like one or two days where the temperature went over 80 degrees. And, the, and it completely topped out one day at about like 83 degrees, in, in only in one aquarium. So yes, the cooling system works. Normally, it can keep every tank at 79 when it's brutally hot outside. But we've already th thought of ways that we could improve its efficiency and improve just its raw cooling power. So I think that sometime maybe this fall or maybe even in the spring, we might uh, do some modifications to essentially double the cooling capacity. We'll be increasing the size of the coils as well as distributing the coils more evenly throughout all the different tank cistern tanks. And at that time, we might even revisit the idea of fully expanding the size of the cistern to go from a 10,000 gallon collection cistern to a 20,000 gallon cistern. And at that point, I'm pretty confident we can keep any volume of water at whatever temperature we liked. All right, guys, that just about does it from here. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to stay up to date on all the latest updates. Until next time, happy reefing.